it's all to do with what we're writing about. So uh, we can restart. Oh no, I started too soon. On the wrong one. All right then. Okay, so Penigrind, as I say, very ancient kind of avatar for all sorts of things. What Penigrind? What Penigrind? What Penigrind? What Penigrind? What Penigrind? What Penigrind? Buildings. You find the right spot, but then the buildings themselves for all works. Both. Don't worry. It's stopped. So. Luckily, we have lower technology. I can do this from the paper. <laughs> if I can go there, you've let me down. <laughs> Smoke uh, it. It's all here, thanks to uh, Chinya, who uh, actually printed this out earlier and made sure that it's big enough for me to be able to read. So, uh, we'll just go straight up. Buildings, you find the right spot, but then the buildings themselves form bulwarks, both for and against sight lines. They can stifle and define. Between the outer walls and the rooms, there are different routes, and some you can retrace, but most are ones you don't venture back to on purpose. Most are interesting just once. Some are too similar to the rest and they can seem repetitive. These can be dangerously draining and the monotony overwhelming, but there are courtyards as well as streets and long winding paths that open out vast territories in between that make the wandering worthwhile, though distracting. At night you can peer in through the windows to the rooms, always on the ground floor of course, unless on a slope that elevates you to the upper windows as you descend or ascend. But the steep inclines can also be tiring and slippery. The rooms are framed by the windows, so there are forced angles, perspectives and trajectories, of course. Endless waiting for someone to come into the space, and sometimes you just catch a glimpse before they leave. It's never easy to have the whole show all at once, and never certain who will be there. These are the normal constraints of this stuff. That and the fact that nothing remains. Everything is as incidental as the fact that we're all less than 200 years old. Detailed descriptions of these sites are tedious. One is superficially like all the rest. Differences come only subtly and after time, coloured by love, fantasy and an earned sense of strange powers. Everything at ground level is bodily clay, tropes of dust to dust, and you can identify nerves going one way and fluids elsewhere, and find terraces where lust stay like gravel, or ledge elsewhere on higher grinding ridges. What started as wild thicket forest darkness, begrudged and begrudging, is less that now, becoming arable and more like pasture for a quintessence of mindless, intoxicating grazing. Grazing can be fine, but is merely indulgence substituting for the genuine quest. But there are they always still there, even if with smaller zest, and some yet with larger risings in them still, standards of horn and hazel eyes or grey-blue. Some bodies have been cut down by age. Some lie there like hawthorn, blackthorn and elm twists, gropes and undulations. You watch them as time clings to them. It's a gentle reminder that the youthful body is not the fulfilment of anything more than youth. And youth knows only a few things and there are deeper, better energies. Penny Grind's rituals and myths are olden and have their histories and futures along enormous derangements of time. Some grow tall in amidst the body's clay and the smoulding heavy shapes that contour theirs. Some grow well. This is a place where the surly and slow bodies burn, morose and smouldering as older beauties, laconic, heavy as the very messages themselves. But we never remember what the messages were here the bodies are hundreds of miles of forgotten tidal events. But we must resist talking about them as ideal vagabonds tramping the public highways without any human habitation. We must always see them in relation to people and their bodies, conversations and interactions. We must let the what grow out of the why and understand that we inhabit many geysers. This is a human perforation of desire that's the longest and most irregular human length anywhere ever. It is a dry place, yet edged by all those liquids, fluids and waters. Everyone flattens down to body marsh, its salt and mud, inescapably part of what we know. Everyone part of the drying life of an ebb tide activity that clarifies everything above it. Doubts, guilts and reflections shine back inward to the other life that isn't here. Bravo. Bravo. What a fine fucking reading.